Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to cover phase locked loop. This is the most requested topic, PLL. So I am going to make sure everything is covered from concept, block diagram to the phases, modes of operation and ranges. Okay, capture range, lock range, everything. I am going to simplify all this for you. You just need to watch this video till the end. Okay. If you want to watch this video in Hindi, then I will provide the link in the description and comment section. You can check out Hindi video also. So let's start with the concept first. What is PLL? So phase locked loop. Okay, it is going to synchronize your input and output signal in frequency as well as phase. Okay, it is going to match it in terms of frequency and phase means you have some signal available to you of particular frequency and particular phase pll is going to match it with this input signal this reference signal and give you a synchronized output signal okay so it is locking two signals it is synchronizing and it's a loop it is a feedback loop so for clarity let me show you this block diagram so this is your output frequency f out and this is feedback path you are passing this frequency to input side again and comparing it with your reference input okay so your goal is your f out should be equal to f in okay it should match your reference input okay this is the goal and pll helps you achieve that okay now the question over here is why do we want to match these two signals if we already have something which is having ideal frequency or the expected frequency why can't we just use it wherever we need why do we need pll because this reference input this oscillators are generally crystal oscillators or quartz oscillators which have very low frequency okay they are excellent in terms of stability but they produce very low frequency signal on the other hand voltage control oscillator okay this is vco these oscillators produce very high frequency but voltage control oscillators are not stable their frequency may get impacted due to temperature and other factors okay so there can be variations of the output of vco that's why you need something as a reference to synchronize it with so to bring the stability we have built this feedback path okay so pll is all about vco is generating some signal of particular frequency and pll is making it follow the reference input which is stable simple okay so as i said it is going to match frequency as well as phase now many people get confused by this word phase locked okay they think that pll will make your phase equal but no pll makes phase difference constant means people think that if you have two signals okay pll will match the phase of this so if phase of this signal is phi 1 and phase of this signal is phi 2 phi 1 equal to phi 2 people think this but this is not true this is wrong okay pll makes phase different constant consider these two signals okay there is phase difference between these two signals you can see here but this phase difference is constant over the time at every interval of time the phase difference is constant and that's what make frequency same the frequency of black and red signals is same both are running with the same frequency only red one is slightly delayed nothing else and if you see this another diagram here there is phase difference but the phase difference is not constant okay so here the frequencies are different phase between two signals changes then the frequency is different and if the phase difference is constant then the frequency is same so point is if you want to synchronize any two signals 
you have to make sure the phase difference is constant and the frequency is same okay and once you make the phase difference constant your frequency is going to be same so now we understood why pll is making phase difference constant because it wants to synchronize the frequency simple now let's jump on pll block diagram okay so pll block diagram consists of three parts phase detector low pass filter and voltage controlled oscillator so voltage control oscillator i have covered in the separate video but for those who have not watched that video i will summarize it in two three sentences so it is just an oscillator whose frequency is controlled by input voltage so whatever input voltage it will get from low pass filter it will change its frequency if you increase the input voltage the frequency will increase if you decrease the input voltage frequency will decrease simple so initially when nothing is applied when there is no reference input the vco is running at its center frequency or a free running frequency you can say okay and that frequency is decided uh, from the external components means if you see the vco ic there is external r and c values of these components decide free running frequency okay so vco is running at that frequency now when you apply the reference input this phase detector it compares fn with the output of vco now phase detector is just a multiplier so if you multiply two frequencies you will get f1 plus f2 and f1 minus m2 consider two signals as sine wave and when we multiply two signals means when we multiply sine a into sine b we have studied this in the maths 3 okay then we will get cos a minus b cos a plus b okay so you are going to get f1 plus f2 and f1 minus f2 as it is lpf low pass filter it is going to pass only low frequency component okay so we compared f in and f out okay and if there is difference in frequency and phase suppose they are not equal in the initial stage so till the point they are not same phase detector will generate error signal error signal is nothing but this component so it passed f in minus f out to lpf okay then lpf gave you some error voltage and based on this voltage the frequency of vco will increase or decrease okay and once the f in is equal to f out your loop is locked because there is no error difference so there will be no error voltage and vco will run at same frequency there will be no increase and decrease in the frequency okay let's take one example suppose f in is 300 and your vco frequency is 100 okay so the difference will come out over here as 200 okay then some error voltage is generated and the vco frequency is increased suppose it became 200 now so 300 minus 200 now will become 100 the difference is 100 so the difference is reduced so f in minus f out is reduced so this voltage will increase and if the voltage is increased the vco frequency will also increase f out is also 300 and f in is also 300 so f in is now equal to f out so this loop is locked because error is now zero okay so in this way it is going to track okay so there were three modes of operations first was free running when there was no input applied so vco was running at its own center frequency or its own free running frequency okay then once you apply the input reference signal then the pll entered in capture mode okay now it is tracking now vco frequency continues to change until it equals the input frequency in capture mode it is actually doing the work of synchronization okay vco is changing its frequency and that frequency is getting compared with the input frequency and then some error voltage is getting generated okay that process is happening until 
both the frequencies are same okay and when the frequencies are same it enters in phase locked state okay it is locked now so these are three states or you can say operation modes of pll now there are two ranges capture range and lock range so pll can acquire this lock state only when the input signal is within capture range your input should be in this range for pll to acquire the lock state okay so fo is your free running frequency okay and suppose capture range is example 5 and 50 if the reference input is between this range then it will get locked suppose input frequency is 8 for this scenario pll can acquire lock state okay it will keep capturing capturing and at one point it is going to get locked the loop is going to get locked but suppose if the frequency is 2 it is out of capture range so it cannot lock the loop okay so definition of capture range is the range of input frequencies around the vco center frequency in which loop can lock when starting from unlocked condition okay then what is lock range now lock range is once your loop is locked okay once your pll is locked and if the input frequency is changed then it can remain in lock condition only till certain point means now let's continue with the same values okay suppose lock range is 1 to 100 okay and your input signal is now 2 now pll is locked now your input signal can be anything between lock range it can be 2 8 it can be 60 70 until 100 it can be anything but once it goes out of 100 then the pll will be unlocked okay it will again start as a free running oscillator so vcu frequency will follow that f in input frequency until lock range okay and when it crosses that lock range again it has to come under the capture range to get locked once it goes outside lock range it has to come under capture range to acquire lock state again okay so the lock range is the range of input frequencies over which the loop remain in the lock condition once it has captured the input signal so the lock range is about when the pll is already in lock state and capture range is about when vco is running in the free running condition so in free running state your input should be under capture range okay and after the lock state your input should not go beyond lock range so that was all about capture range and lock range okay so we have covered the concept block diagram of pll then what are the modes of operation then what is capture range and what is lock range everything we have covered In the next video we will cover IC565 that is PLL IC okay it is very important so i will come back with IC565 video okay. i hope you have understood everything which i have covered in this video if you have liked this video please press the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel thank you